Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what we're going to be doing is checking out some lightweight Linux distributions. And to help us do that, I've recruited the aid of what I think is the worst laptop in the world. This right here is the HP Mini 110-3030NR uh, netbook laptop. And no, this thing isn't technically the worst spec thing in the world. There are probably laptops that are technically worse than this, but this is pretty bad. And the reason why I'm calling it the worst laptop in the world is my personal experience with this. Uh, back in, I believe it was 2012 or so, I helped my grandmother purchase this laptop. And at the time, I do believe this thing was just right around the $200 range. So even for more than 10 years ago, or about 10 years ago, it was a dirt cheap laptop. Now when it comes to actual specifications of this bad boy, it's rocking a 1.66 gigahertz Intel Atom processor. It's the N450 model. It features a single gigabyte of DDR2 memory. And as far as the video memory built into that Atom processor, we have a staggering 256 megabytes of VRAM. The hard drive is a 160 gigabyte spinning disk at 5,400 RPM. And the screen is a 10.1 inch screen with a 1024 by 600 resolution. Now, honestly, that's not too bad. What really, really made this laptop suck was the operating system that they decided to put on it. And that is Windows 7. Now, Windows 7 is overall a fantastic operating system, but they put Windows 7 Starter Edition on this laptop. Now, one thing that you might notice is the processor in this laptop can handle 64-bit, but Windows 7 Starter Edition only supports 32-bit. So with what little bit of CPU power we have, we're not utilizing it to its fullest potential. And then if we actually log into Windows 7 Starter Edition, which I still have on this laptop at the moment, one, some of the things that actually make sense when it comes to the limitations is when it comes to the theming, you're not gonna get that kind of arrow Windows transparency effects, but the limitations go well beyond that. There is absolutely no personalization on this thing whatsoever, even down to changing the background. You have to have this standard Windows background, no matter what. And when my grandma first purchased this thing, it was kind of difficult to explain to her that you just spent $200 on something that you can't even change the background of. Additionally, it's missing a whole bunch of other features that you'd expect, like uh, multi-monitor support. That's why I'm not able to use a capture card with this. They make it more difficult to switch in between users. You can't use it to like play DVDs. The actual Windows Media Center is completely completely stripped of a lot of the functionality that you're going to want. Overall, this thing is just very limiting. But one thing that's kind of cool about it is if we go down here and actually open up our task manager, it is pretty good on the RAM utilization. Uh, right now we are running about 360-ish megabytes of RAM on the system at idle, and the CPU isn't really working too hard. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just open up Internet Explorer down here just to see what happens to the CPU. So let's give that a click, wait for it to fire up, and we can see our actual CPU usage jump pretty significantly, and our RAM usage slightly ticked up. What I'm going to do real quick is actually connect to the Internet here, God help me, and uh, connect to some web pages real quick. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and Bing something. Let's just look up Tech Hut on Bing and see what that does to our uh, RAM utilization and all that. Uh, it's not bumping up too much, and it seems to be uh, not using too much resources actually using Internet Explorer. But let's go ahead and throw a Chromium on this thing if it's even going to let us. So the cool thing, I'm uh, downloading Google Chrome here, and they still have a, a supported Windows 7 32-bit version, so that's uh, it's pretty nice. This thing is taking absolutely forever to install. All right. Chrome is opening, it's uh, not responding, so we're going to wait for it to respond before I can flip the camera back around and see, show you guys the performance. Alright, so welcome to Chrome. It looks like we're using, um, at least on my end, about just under 600 megabytes of our system memory. Let's do the dreaded task of opening another tab. 
and see what happens there. So I clicked the new tab button. It didn't go up too much. We're at 670 scraping almost to 700 megabytes of RAM utilization. We can see our CPU all over the place and actually trying to load any of these websites is just like, this is a couple seconds away from being unusable on this, trying to access anything on this laptop. And our memory is still climbing here. It's using 713, 716. So we're, we're going to be capped out on our RAM pretty soon. So overall, this just is not an experience that I or nobody else should want out of computing. So what we're going to do is fix this. And we're going to do this by trying out a couple lightweight Linux distributions. And by better, I mean more lightweight. So let's jump on into it. All right, so here we have Zorn OS. Now, based on the installation process, I can already tell you that this is probably not going to be a light enough Linux distribution for this laptop. The thing with Zorn Lite is it's right in the middle of something lightweight and a normal Linux distribution. Uh, I would argue that the best use case for this, if you're somewhere in between the two to four gigabyte range when it comes to how much RAM your system has. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and connect to some Wi-Fi real quick. Now the main version of Zorn uses GNOME, but this light version uses XFCE, so it is gonna run a little bit better. Now the first thing I'm curious about is our system resources on boot. So we could go over to system here and open up our task manager and see how we are running. So it looks like we're using about 57% of our memory, being that this is a gig that's roughly almost 600 megabytes of RAM from boot, which is double what we are getting in the Windows 7 Starter Edition. So overall, this is still gonna be too heavy, and we could try to open up a web browser, for example. Let's open up just Firefox here. So we're getting, oh, here comes Firefox. It, it's been about a minute. I clicked on it again and we got a Firefox is not responding error, but it went ahead and opened up this time. So I'm gonna give this a quick minimize. And I say the word quick lightly. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And you can see now our CPU usage is around 100%. The memory usage isn't too high, but if we tried to go to a website, let's just match the same setup we did before by having Google open in one tab and going to distro watch on the other tab. And just like before, even this isn't really going to be much of a usable experience. Uh, still waiting for everything to completely load up. The RAM utilization didn't go up too much, but just a couple tabs of Firefox is for this computer, just too much stress to be even usable. As you can tell, Zorn, at least even the light version of Zorn is not going to work for a piece of crap like this. So what we're gonna need to do is get a little bit more lightweight. One, I don't think we're gonna be able to use just your standard desktop environment. We're probably gonna have to switch to something that only uses window managers. And two, something without all the extra fluff. But at the same time, you could go with something like a teeny core Linux and get the absolute most bare bone, but I still want this to be a friendly user experience. So to meet that, requirement that I have, we're going to use Antix Linux. Uh, Antix Linux is a very lightweight, wonderful Linux distribution that's going to do everything you'd want it to do. It comes with a dedicated web browser, uh, office suite, everything to go ahead and get some work done. It's Debian based, so if you have any familiarity working with the apt package manager, you're going to have a good time. Overall, it's wonderful. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna install it on this machine real quick, and we're gonna check out just the general user experience of it. So we are booted into this Linux distro, and I can say already that I, I got it all installed and everything. It's definitely a, a much more fluid experience compared to what we've been playing around in. Uh, right now, with nothing open, you can see the RAM usage right here on the sidebar, and we're using 97 megabytes of RAM. And I've already had a couple different things open as you saw and closed some things out and the RAM consumption is very low. CPU right now is hovering in the low 5% range. But let's go ahead and do what we were doing previously. Let's open up our web browser and I'm going to not cut it out here just so you guys can see how quickly it opens up. That was not too bad. Definitely way quicker than Zorin Lite. 
We do see our CPU climbing here a little bit. It's touching 100% here and there, but it seems to have dropped back down into the 60s to 50s, or even lower than that, actually. So it's definitely much more usable. So what we're going to do real quick is go to the websites we were on on the other distros. So let's go over to google.com, open a new tab, and you can see how much quicker that is versus the last distro we were in. And from here, let's go to the distrowatch.com. And the CPU is definitely spiking here or there, and the RAM consumption is still very low. With uh, Firefox open and two tabs, we're at uh, 331 megabytes of RAM out of our one gigabyte. And our CPU usage is cooling down a little bit, hovering in between about 50 to 80%. And if I go ahead, let's open up the terminal here so we can see this just a little bit better. So if I open this up, I type htop, enter. You can see right now we are using 366 megabytes of RAM and our two threads on our single core processor is hovering at that about 50% range or so. Right now there are only 55 tasks running, well two running, 55 total. So we can go ahead and close that out here. And like I had open, I was kind of playing around in some of the other applications just to see how quickly everything opens up and it is a very smooth experience. Um, after playing around with this one for a little bit, this is definitely one that I could use on this computer with no issues at all. See if I go down here to LibreOffice Writer, give that an open. It's kind of a bigger application, so I'm not going to cut anything out here so you can see the actual loading times and it is about up. So this right here is one that I probably could recommend to make your crappy computer just a little bit more usable. So that ended up working really well and I'm probably gonna end up keeping it on this laptop and using it here or there. One thing with this older laptop is the one thing that is really good about it is the keyboard. It almost has like a tactile clicky feel they don't make keyboards like they used to, even compared to cheap devices like this. Now, I know I briefly went over these two Linux distros. If you want me to do a full dedicated kind of first look overview video of these two distros or any other distros, leave them down below. Uh, thank you to uh, Apex, the Apex Toothbrush, for sponsoring this video. I never thought that I would have a toothbrush company wanting to be highlighted on a Linux video, but it's happened. Check them out. And additionally, thank you to all the other channel supporters, specifically my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Phil, Matt, Kyle, and Timo Anthony. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. It means the world to me. And thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. Uh, with all that said, I do hope you have a beautiful day. Make sure you're subscribed. We have some cool projects coming up. Ring that bell so you do not miss those. Uh, have a beautiful day and goodbye.